The housing shortage in Kansas City is causing home prices here to increase a whole lot faster than they should. However, that could be changing very, very soon. According to some experts and economists, it could happen in the next 12 months. So in this video, we're going to investigate it and answer the following three questions. Why are we in a housing shortage? When will the housing shortage in Kansas City end? And should you buy a home right now or should you wait? Including four different scenarios for doing so. First, why is there a housing shortage in Kansas City? This graph says it all, if you look from 2010 to 2022, we have been in a clear deficit in the amount of housing units compared to the growth of the population. The factor making all of this worse today is high mortgage rates. It's the same reason why a lot of homeowners who would normally sell and bring new inventory to the market, why they're choosing to hold off for the next couple years until mortgage rates fall. And that's because in 2020 and 2022, mortgage rates are around 2.5 and 3%. But as inflation got out of hand, prices started increasing across the board and throughout the economy, the Federal Reserve decided to do this and start increasing interest rates. And mortgage rates followed suit and they've more than doubled since those two and a half to 3% rates. Meaning if you bought a house for $500,000 back when rates were around 3%, Let's say you put 20% down, so $100,000 as a down payment, your monthly mortgage payment before taxes and insurance would be around 1686. But if you bought that exact same house today, same price, $500,000, same down payment, $100,000 or 20% down, and today's mortgage rate of 6.7%, your monthly housing payment would be almost $1,000 more expensive at 2581 before taxes and insurance. Now that just accounts for the increase in mortgage rates since then. What it doesn't account for is the increase in appreciation and how quickly home prices have been increasing since there's basically no supply of homes on the market. So if you factor in both of those costs, that increased monthly payment, decreased buying power, more expensive home prices, is exactly why many homeowners that have two and a half and 3% mortgage rates are choosing not to sell. However, all of that might be changing and some experts say it could happen within the next 12 months. And before we break all of that down, if this is your first time I'm seeing these videos. My name is Nick Massa. I'm a local real estate agent here in the Kansas City area. If you're thinking about buying or building a home, I'd love to support you. So if you have any questions about any of this, or if you'd like to put together a strategy that makes the most of the current Kansas City real estate market, there's a link at the top of the description, as well as my contact info. If you give me a call, text, or email, I'll get right back to you. And that way we can make all of this information far more specific to you. Now, according to this article from realtor.com, there's been a notable spike in the number of new homes hitting the market for sale across the country. In last week's video, we documented a similar upstick here in Kansas City as well, but that all depends on whether it's more competitive or less competitive than the last several years. And that article from Realtor.com cites several experts who suggest the reason for this upstick is because mortgage rates remain stagnant. They're saying that most homeowners with those 2.5%, 3% mortgage rates are deciding to sell now because they surmise that mortgage rates are going nowhere fast and they're finally making their moves before rates possibly tick up again. Now that's certainly one explanation. It doesn't seem to be the most plausible scenario. Essentially, they're saying that maybe these homeowners are deciding to bite the bullets and sell thinking it's either now or never. It does seem very unlikely that mortgage rates will increase anytime soon, but they do make one important distinction, which is even with this temporary boost, the number of homes for sale is still 40% lower compared to 2017 and 2019. That's something that we're seeing, especially here in Kansas City. We covered it last week. Here's that chart that I mentioned. There's a stair-step decline. Obviously, the data for 2024 is inconclusive. We'll know by around this time next year where we land on that front. But all of this is driven by the higher mortgage rates, a lot of homeowners choosing not to sell, the fundamental lack of supply of homes being built in Kansas City compared to the demand for homes in Kansas City. And even that article from Realtor.com decides that there's no guarantee this temporary upstick will continue. So this is interesting. A good chunk of homeowners are deciding, you know what, we're gonna bite the bullet. We're just gonna act now instead of waiting and waiting and waiting. We know that there's a pretty strong block of homeowners, especially here in Kansas City, given the housing shortage, that just won't move. Won't move until we cross a critical threshold. And this article from MarketWatch claims to know exactly what that critical threshold is. One of the economists that they cite says there is a magic number for fixed mortgage rates that I think would unfreeze the housing market, a price bringing together buyers and sellers, a market clearing 
spring price. That number has a 5% handle. Another economist from Moody's Analytics also cited in that article seems to think that 6% is a key threshold for restoring affordability to the point that home buyers and sellers begin to transact. In other words, if we could get below 6% mortgage rates, ideally closer to 5%, would it, would it fix this housing shortage that we're seeing in Kansas City? Well, they clearly seem to think so. The real question becomes how quickly could we even possibly get to that point? And if you look at some of the predictions lower in that article, a lot of them seem to think that we'll probably land between 5% or 6% by the end of 2024 or quarter one or quarter two of 2025. Now, this all seems like great news, but there are a couple problems with this. The first one being that we know just based on what we've seen during 2020, 2021, 2022, when mortgage rates decreased, everybody jumped into the housing market. We know there's a lot of demand for housing and very little supply. That's why prices keep going up and up and up, even though mortgage rates are very high. But the problem is that once that happens here in Kansas City, does it actually solve the housing shortage or does it cause home prices here in Kansas City to increase at a quicker rate and faster than they otherwise would have? At the end of the day, we know a lot of people who are going to sell their homes are going to turn around and buy their homes. That's why they're not doing it right now is they don't want to turn around and buy with high mortgage rates. So would this increased amount of people selling their homes, would it actually result in more inventory hitting the market? So with all of those questions up in the air, the real question right now that matters is if you're currently a homeowner with a 3% or below mortgage rate and you really want to sell, should you bite the bullet and do it now or should you wait? We're gonna walk through a couple of different scenarios here in just a second, but before we do, I have to preface this with if you're thinking of buying or building a home in the Kansas City suburbs, or maybe you're on the fence, I'm speaking very generally here. Your specific situation matters far more than anything I'm about to say. And I'd be happy to support you and help you come up with a strategy to maximize your upside regardless of which path you take. You can click that link at the top of the description or you can give me a call, text, or email using my contact info below. One option is to buy a home right now. And even though you'd be giving up a 3%, two and a half, percent mortgage rate, you would be able to lock in today's home prices. We know that as soon as mortgage rates drop and a significant block of people are waiting for that moment to happen, a lot of people are going to jump into the market. That's kind of caused prices to spiral, just like we saw in 2020, 21, 22, uh, and you'd avoid all of that. So you'd have less competition, you'd get the lower price today, and you can always refinance down the road. A lot of lenders right now are offering no cost or reduced cost to refinance down the road, and that could be a very favorable strategy. Second option would be to hold and wait until mortgage rates fall. Yes, you'd be in a more competitive market. Yes, you'd probably have to have a little bit more cash on hand to beat out other offers on the home that you eventually decide to write an offer on. But if you care more about your buying power, keeping that monthly payment low, that could be the route for you. Third option would be to hold and remodel. If you like where you live, if you feel like you just need a little bit more space or you need to update things a little bit, this is like the perfect scenario because not only are you increasing the value of your property, Maybe you can solve the reason you would need to move and buy a new house in the first place. And instead of down the road having a fight and write a really competitive offer and maybe overpay for a property, if you paid it in cash, you'd be fine. If you did have to finance the addition or the remodel, you'd be financing a fraction of the home while keeping that lower mortgage rate for the meantime instead of a whole new home. And then the final option, I, I think this is like a really strategic one, is building a home. And the reason why is because this buys you time. It takes about 10 months, 10 to 12 months to build a home in Kansas City. Typically, a builder will finance the construction for you. You'd pay a five to 10% deposit up front, and you don't have to close on that home until construction is complete 10 or 12 months later, which means you'd be locking in today's prices before they spiral out of control because demand spikes as mortgage rates decrease. So you lock in today's prices and you lock in next year's mortgage rates at the same time. This is also strategic because as you lock in those lower mortgage rates next year, you're also selling in that environment too, which means you're capitalizing on when prices increase, people have more buying power, it's more competitive. But of course, this only matters if you are interested in new construction. And like I said, all of these scenarios depends on your specific situation and your goals over the next year, the next like five to 10 years really. So you feel free to click the link at the top of the description or give me a call, text, or email using my contact info below. We can put together a custom strategy for you to help you maximize the upside of no matter what path you decide to take. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more market updates just like this, and you can watch this video next. Or like I said, you can click on this link right here to go ahead and get in touch with me. So click on that video or click on that link, and I'll see you on the next one.